I'm embarrassed now. I had a terrible day yesterday, and I attacked my family out of frustration. And as an adult, 39 years old, I'm still learning how to be polite and smooth and cool and relaxed. Learning and failing at it. So, that sucks. And I'm embarrassed for my family, but I'm also embarrassed of my family, but illegitimately. Where is my right to be embarrassed of them? They are nothing. They, they do nothing wrong. They are harmless. My sister works for a judge where she surely prosecutes the drug war, you know? So I'm against what she does, but it's harmless to have a career in law. Like it's not something you can criticize a person for. You shouldn't be a lawyer during this time of oppression is not a statement that anyone cottons to. And I just feel like crap because I don't have a job and I don't have access to my family and I can't convince anyone of anything I believe. And so it just feels like I'm alone. Now, one thing that's been happening lately, I just got a uh, paper uh, from the Royal Society of London about um, polyhedra. And it's due to Adam Lohr. And man, is this guy great. Um, and he uh, sent me that paper. And so I got to leaf through it today. I was thrilled to read it. And I, um, I don't know. I'm just lucky to have him. I just wish I had more. I wish that I had my family. I wish that I didn't have to be sad when talking about them and have a mournful tone of voice. I want to be able to say, yeah, my mom has the best shibboleth passage of all people you can imagine. She's got, she's got it down. She knows all of the numbers and all of the, the implications of the N-word, the names of all the authors that have put the N-word as the title of their books. I wish I could say that, but I can't because she will not converse with me. And it must be about my fault. I mean, I don't understand. She's a harmless lady. Again, she's nothing. She used to be a lawyer, but she's been retired so many years. She plays recorder. Do, 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 do. Bridge plays bridge online. I mean, harmless, just nothing. I mean, not, you know, she doesn't have anything going on that's, that's objectionable. It's just that I have something going on and I need other people as part of that something that I've got going on. And I can't do it alone. It is very much a social activity. For me, mathematics is not solitary. It is something you do with other people. And that's because of course you do. Everything you do is with other people. It's like inescapable, that social element of human life. And yet I'm, I'm just flailing. And so this, um, I don't know. So anyway, that's where things are right now. And I, uh, in case you wonder, one of the books is this one by Dick Gregory, and Dick Gregory is awesome. It's a very good book. The other one is by uh, Randall Kennedy. And there are a few other ones out there with N-word in the title, but they um, are not noticeable. They are more expensive. They are smaller uh, in in impact. Really, it's Randall Kennedy and Dick Gregory. And I should be among that list. I should be the white N-word expert because it's what I've spent so much of my time on. 
And the reason that I'm not, I truly believe is just because I've never been able to communicate my passion for N-word justice to anyone. And the slurophobias that have dominated the conversation have dissipated into my personal flaws and aspects of me that are not easy to respect. And so we don't get to talk about what's interesting. What's interesting is that context means everything about a word, but context shifts with words. That passage of context from one state to another is a fascinating thing because that means all the words around a word change. And as words get more and less taboo, we approach them differently and we value them differently and we ascribe different uh, implications to them. And so once upon a time, the N-word was something you would say if you were ignorant and you would just get away with talking about black people that way. And then it became talking about ignorant people and Chris Rock hit the scene, but there was always... Uh, to kill a mockingbird and the idea that only low class people use it, that it's a, a, a base term as uh, offensive. And that's where my family's stuck. And all I'm saying is that for me, the context has shifted into the point where I want to hear about N rights. I want to hear somebody say, I have this agenda for America. I need these rights. I want these rights. I want to replace HIPAA with a pro-drug policy, a drug war on the side of drugs so that people can find their optimum medications. And I just mean people in general. I want to be able to prescribe somebody without any kind of mental illness diagnosis a regimen of caffeine, sugar, and pot or, or cocaine and uh, coffee and no dos And just, look, those were stupid examples. But I, I guess what I'm saying is instead of drugs as an awful weakness and a failure of a person and a crime and something worth imprisoning people for, it should be something that you engage your mind with and that changes your mind and changes your consciousness. And that's what, but they've never been good in my life. Like my relationship with LSD was terrible. I was, I was just a mess. And so, but I do think it should be legal and it's scary. It is scary. Drugs are scary. But I think that the way that we deal with fear, with bigotry and a culture of security and passwords and locks on all the doors and alarms and, you know, signs and notices and walls, our, our culture of lockdown, while it makes a lot of sense for COVID doesn't make as much sense for other social stuff. I know that there are criminals that do actually commit violence on innocent people. So I'm not, but yeah, guns too. Like if there were fewer guns, we would be more safe. What's my point? I'm talking, I mean, it's pointless for me to talk about these things. It's pointless for me to talk. I, I have my three subs. I, I got back to three. I was two yesterday. I was in a mess yesterday. I was very upset. And I guess I still am. What are you going to do? It sucks. This life really sucks sometimes. Take care. Goodbye.